Hello, bonjour. So today we do the shading of our comic page. This video follows a previous video here. So if you haven't seen and you want to know how I prepare all this flat color, uh, just refer to this video. And uh, if you are ready, let's start. So in today's tutorial, we will replicate this layer, the shading layer on this page seven of episode 34. And it's a layer that is really responsible for all the light and all the shadows on my webcomic. So if I remove it, the visibility, not the layer, you will see that the page is full flat. There is only the background that are painted and sometimes it's, it's just a flat color. And if I reactivate it, you can see now the page fully shaded. So I will zoom in so you can see more detail about it. If I deactivate it, you see all the part flat. And if I activate it, there is and the shadow and the light. And this is quite unique uh, because usually other comic artists prefer to shade and shadows and highlight separately. But I prefer to put them together on a single layer because for me it's easier this way. So to start, I will start to remove this layer because we will recreate it and I will keep this stack. So in this layer stack, what I have, I have here my inking. That is my character. You can see it's tainted slightly in violet. This is done by calling the control U filter HSV, HSY and just put colorize. And then you can put the color of your choice on your line. And you have also my speed line that I keep separately. Um, you have on the bottom of the layer stack that is not uh, visible because it's not part of the group. It's my colorized mask, uh, the one we obtained on the previous tutorial. It wasn't on this page, but it's really similar. Uh, and you can see that my colorized mask uh, fill areas like the face fully. There is no part for the eyes or for the color for the tongue. It's all the same color because I treat it by selection area and you will see it has a very important role into this tutorial. So then I duplicate my colorized mask into the character layer. And in the character layer, you can see that I use a normal brush just to paint this eyeball color, this tongue color, um, the little blushing here. And I'm doing even the tears of Shishimi here. And then I paint the background under the character. So this is usually more than one layer. I simplified the stack uh, to get a single layer here. But uh, as you can see, I'm painting all the lighting effect and everything directly on my uh, background layer. So once I have a layer stack that is prepared like this, what I can do is I can select the character layer and I will put it inside a group. So you have a shortcut for this is Control G and it creates a group where your character layer is inside. Now I will create a new paint layer, just a little plus here. And I will rename this layer shade. And I will press here the little A Greek symbol on the layer stack. And this is the Inherit Alpha. And thanks to this, everything I will paint on this layer will have the same alpha, so the same transparency as my character. Uh, I can also do more. If I can put another layer and paint some red, I can color and then I will only shade my character. So I will remove that and delete the content of this experiment. For my shade layer, I want a blending mode that is able to do the shading and also to do the light as mentioned before. So I will just put the layer into the hard light blending mode. So I'm clicking here on this menu and 
If you don't have already the hard light in your favorite, you'll find this layer in the lighten category. So press the little arrows here to unfold all the layers related to the lighten category. And inside it, you will find the hard light here. So you can press the little checkbox and this little checkbox uh, says that you want this blending mode to be part of your favorite list. Uh, so it will be quicker to find next time. But then when it's ready, you can click it and now your layer is set to hard light. Now we will select a brush. I'm proposing for this tutorial to use uh, uh, this one. It's the dry roller one. And then we could already start painting on our layer, but I prefer here to fill it with a mid gray. And why I prefer fill it this layer with a mid RGB gray, it's because if we start to get some transparent color like this one gray, and we want to then pick this color on this character right now, as you can see on the, on the layer, there is only a black color. So if I'm picking with control alt and click, this is just to pick the color on this layer and not on the full stack, I will obtain some black everywhere. And, and this is a problem because sometimes I want this gray and not this black for my brush. If I want to replicate exactly the same color from this one to here, I have some black. So to avoid this problem, I will delete. I will pick on my palette here, uh, 127, 127 and 127 type of gray. It's really at the middle if you have RGB in eight byte document. So I'm pressing OK. I'm going to edit and fill with foreground color. So now my layer is full gray, as you can see, but the hard light blending mode consider the mid gray as a transparent color. Everything above it will be some lighting or light effect, and everything under it will be a bit like multiply, some shadows effect. Then I can start to shade my page. So at first I advise to use a very low zoom, so something that you can see some far, from far away, and do some color sketch. So because the background is blue, I would probably assume that the general color ambient is bluish. So I'm selecting a blue color and I will replicate this maybe on all the page here. Maybe for this tutorial, I will change the scene where Chichimi is fighting and I will give her orange power for changing. And now, because I can pick the color previously, because I have a, a solid basis layer, I can control alt click this color and replicate here because we have the same light on paper. And we can also reproduce this by se click selecting this color layer for this character. So now we have a first pass of color. If I want to select, to start shading, for example, this panel, I will want to just start shading the hair. But how to not paint outside the hair? And that's where our selection, remember the colorized mask under will be very useful. Uh, for that, you can right click on it and oh, my menu is a bit outside, so I will move a bit the windows so you can see what is happening. If I right click on it, I can select here a color label and you can pick the one you want, but for this tutorial, I will pick a pink one and I will try to reposition the windows like that. And now I can ask for example, the magic wand, the contiguous selection tool. If I go to the tool option, 
So I will just unfold that a little bit. I can ask to select by color label here. And I will pick the pink color label. So now when I will be on my shading layer, if I press the magic wand here, it will select the hair. And this will not depend on the color because you might say, yes, it's normal because here the color is yellow, uh, but no, you, you will see. Even if I do some uh, really weird stuff on this layer shading, if I go to the magic wand, this tool, I have a shortcut for this, and I press it again, it will select the hair. And here it will select the skin and here it will select the the clothes so thanks to that i will go back with undo in time and i will select the air of chichimi here and i want to start to shade the hair so i will pick this color right here and i will press the k uh, shortcut key on the keyboard and I will press it twice or a bit more and this will darken my color selected so then as you can see I have like a shadow color it's not <laughs> a good one it's a bit uh, too warm for me so I will probably go back and select something like this yes this one is better and then I can start to make some big block. For where I don't want the light uh, to reach this character. So maybe for this uh, tutorial, I will limit myself to this panel because uh, I don't want to reshade the full page. <laughs> it, it would be like uh, working another time on it and you can see that I'm using the color picker on this layer a lot so it's control alt click and I have my key light here um, I could probably take a little bit brighter color and fill the shadow with another color yeah, uh, something just a little bit brighter just to better see the volume. Maybe something like that. I will, I will zoom it a little bit more so you can see what is happening. And if I want now to make some deep shadows here, I'm just pressing K on keyboard just to get darker color and then I will be able like this to, to select a relative darker color to the one I have. So this is very convenient for making a very deep shadows. And by the way, if you are uh, annoyed by this preview of selection, the marching ant, it's called, you can uh, hide this marching on by pressing Ctrl H on your keyboard. The selection is still here, but you will see a sort of uh, what you see is what you get rendering. And at any time, if you want to show the selection again, press Ctrl H again and you will see the marching on. So right now I will launch a little time lapse and I will continue to shade this way all the character.
When your shading is done, you can also influence the color. If you are not really happy later with the, with the composition, just select your shading and uh, select your panel with a rectangular selection tool and then press Ctrl B for the color balance and Ctrl B, uh, the color balance plus this shading technique works very well together because uh, you can decide for the mid-tone to go a bit more violet and you will see directly the effect and for example getting the highlight uh, probably more yellow so but here i guess i have mostly mid-tones on this layer and no small points of highlight and uh, for the deep shadow you can also get them a bit more reddish or a little bit more bluish following your taste so that's how ends my video about shading uh, it was a little bit too detailed and if you want to continue and get more tips about color grading uh, you can see this video that i'm showing right now on the screen and um, if you want to know a bit more how to make uh, this character some very good magical effect i also made this video about uh, the magical effect I hope you like it, the video and I want to thanks here uh, my co-worker here. I also want to thanks all the supporters of my webcomic on TP, LiberaPay and Patreon. Uh, this video wouldn't exist without your support and uh, that's a lot. I also want to thanks all the comments, all the like, all the button, the reshare and etc etc. Uh, this is very important for the channel to grow and also to reach more audience. So thank you very much for that and see you later. Bye bye.